Hello everyone, I'm Mike Lindsay. Thank you so much for viewing my channel where we talk about different wilderness medicine and science topics. I'm going to be doing a couple of videos on first aid kits. We're going to be talking about how to choose them, what things you might need and might not need. But for this first video, as you can probably tell by the title and thumbnail, we're going to be going a little off topic by talking about what items you should put in your first aid kit if you were a Civil War medic, and no first aid kit back then would have been complete without a big bottle of whiskey. For those of you viewing this outside of the United States, that would have been in the 1860s. Back then, whiskey was used as a pain medication and also as a way to get soldiers' courage up. You can find stories of soldiers drunkenly stumbling on the battlefield or hammered officers falling off their horses in battle. Man, Civil War medicine would have been so awesome. Actually, no. No, it would have been terrible. And in addition to whiskey, they also had opium to treat pain because one addicting substance is never enough. But the Civil War was well known for amputations. In fact, doctors back then were known as sawbones. So you're gonna need a stronger anesthetic. And back then, you would have had two choices. So one, you could have mixed a little alcohol and sulfuric acid together and come up with a chemical called ether. Ether was effective, but it had a slight problem. You see, back then there were no flashlights, and so surgery was usually performed by candlelight. And ether had a tendency to... It turns out people did not like waking up from surgery to find out they had been lit on fire. So people tended to choose the other anesthetic, chloroform. Actually, this is soy sauce, but I needed it to be more dramatic. It turns out they administered chloroform with a technique called open drop. Now, as a physician, I give medication in all sorts of different ways, in the mouth, under the tongue, up the nose, in the muscle, in the skin. So I was excited to learn about a new technique to give medications because I had never heard of this. And it turns out they just ace ventura them until they stopped wiggling. Okay, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but yes, that's a general gist. Jokes aside, they did have one amazing medication back then. And I happen to have some right here for real this time. This is tonic water, same as you can buy at any grocery store. I realize that some people think that tonic water is just carbonated water, but when you put it under black light, you'll see that it fluoresces. The chemical that fluoresces in tonic water is actually a drug, a drug that changed human history, quinine. Back in the 1600s, they realized that the bark of the cinchona tree in Peru cured fevers. It turns out the bark contained quinine, and the fever it was curing was malaria. Over the next few hundred years, its use grew more widespread, and British soldiers in malaria endemic areas had to take a daily dose. But since quinine tastes supremely bitter, they wanted a way to make it more enjoyable. So British soldiers began to combine it with a little sugar, a little lime, a little gin. It became so popular that they just started selling little bottles of carbonated sweetened quinine, which they called tonic water, and realized back then this was a medication. In fact, Winston Churchill was quoted as saying that the gin and tonic saved more Englishmen's lives and minds than all the doctors in the empire. It became so popular and widespread that it gradually transitioned from medicinal to recreational. So whenever you order a gin and tonic at the bar, you're actually consuming a malaria drug. Now, I don't want to hear about anyone being belligerently drunk at a bar claiming I'm fighting disease because the tonic water of today is at way too low of concentration to actually fight malaria. But it still does retain that bitter taste that quinine is known for. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this entertaining. Please consider subscribing as it really helps me out. No goofy sign off line today, but leave one in the comments. I'll pick one for a future video.